We are here with Neil Shipley. Neil, uh, pretty exciting week, I'd say. Um, I'm assuming in your career in golf, this has got to be about as, as excited and pumped up as you are to play some golf. How has the week gone so far? Have you played some practice rounds, got a chance to go out on the golf course? Yeah, we were out uh, on the golf course yesterday, got 18 in, played my... Did you play with? Uh, I played my last nine with Nick Dunlap and uh, got a little rematch there. Nice, and, who won? Uh, the, we, we, you know, we, we don't need to let okay, everyone that's fine, know. That's but, fine. We, don't, we don't have to dive into that. He's but, a pro now, you know. He is, exactly. But uh, it, was, no, it was a lot of fun to get on the course with him and uh, just kind of pick his brain about what what the change has been for him since getting on tour and what he's had to learn and just kind of uh, getting ahead of the curve there for myself. Can we go back to the amateur and just that whole week? Because, I mean, fans fell in love with you. I feel like TV fell in love with you. It was like a lot of fun to watch you, your emotions out on the golf course. You seemed to really embrace it and enjoy it. What was the week like um, when you kind of look back on it? Like, what do you think about when you think about Cherry Hills? Yeah, I mean, I think Cherry, it's, the week is almost a blur just because it goes by so fast and you play so much golf and you're pretty much golf course to the bed and then back. But, uh, I mean, I, what I really remember – are just like just a few key shots from each match and I've really carried those with me and kind of like when I came in the clutch and just carried that you know the fact that I've done that under the gun um it gives me a lot of confidence that this week I can go do the same thing um and you know I, it was really good to have all my fa friends and family out there and have uh you know, my really good friend on the bag as well. So it was, you know, just a great week, dream week at the U.S. Amateur. It, I mean, is it is it weird as you're trying to accomplish something that, you know, is it's the biggest amateur event in the entire world. Is it strange? Is it weird? Is it fun to have all these people kind of come out, support people texting you that maybe you hadn't heard from? What was that like to go from I'm a collegiate golfer, I'm a good amateur player, to all of a sudden kind of being a celeb in the golf space? Yeah, it's been been interesting for sure. You know, when you get uh, a lot of random texts, sometimes it, it gets. I don't have this number. Yeah, exactly. It's uh... block. <laughs> no, we, we don't. We try not to do that. But like the week of, it's you just gotta put your phone yeah, away yeah. sometimes. And uh, but and you know, a week like this at the Masters, when you have all those crowds and all that support, it's. I think it's awesome. I love to embrace it and just use the energy that the crowd gives us, and uh, you know, turn that into good golf shots and uh, some good vibes. When you're prepping for the Masters, when you're prepping for Thursday, I know you've come out and played some practice rounds, got a chance to see the golf course. What are you doing in terms of your practice to prep for this place? Are you working on, you know, hitting the ball right to left? Are you working on different types of pitch shots? What are you focusing on to make sure your golf game is ready for Thursday here versus maybe another golf course or different grasses or something like that? Yeah, honestly, in trying to treat it like a normal week. Okay. Um, obviously, I think off the tee, I have practiced those right to left shots a good bit, just because you need to have them in a few spots. And if you can do those really consistently, you're gonna gain a lot of shots on the field. Um, I think too, also just iron play and getting really confident, and you're probably like gap wedge to eight iron because you have a lot of gap wedges to eight irons in here uh, into these greens. So it's uh, been focusing a lot on those, and you know, also just huge is just getting the speed of the greens down and getting really you know locked in on those so i've been spending a lot of time on the putting green we 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 have augusta national in our brains right as golf fans as, as young people watch the masters i mean you see it on tv and you think it is something and then you come on property you come here for your first practice round what was different what shocked you about the golf course that maybe you maybe had a, had a misconception about or you mm -hmm. thought it was going to be this and it was actually this yeah, I mean, obviously you have the cliche that it's way hillier than right for uh, sure. They gotta which, lay that out there. Yeah, it's uh, that one definitely true, but that's the obvious obvious one. Um, I think that's what's super interesting is at least I haven't been on property before this week or before coming playing to, some practice yeah, playing rounds, some right. practice rounds, and uh, you know, it's um, the green complexes. There's a lot more of a flat area to hit your ball into than I thought there would be. Interesting. When, when you hear people talk about it, it's like, oh my gosh, these greens are so undulated and, and crazy, and you think you're going to have a bunch of elephants on the green. And, you know, the edges of the green have a lot of runoff area, don't get me wrong, but if you hit it to the middle of the green, you're going to probably hold the green about 99% of the time. Uh, so, you know, that was uh, pleasantly surprising whenever I saw that. Do you have any more practice rounds set up? Anybody different away from Nick Dunlop you're going to play with this week? Yeah, I'm going to try to get out with Russell Henley uh, cool. a little bit later this week. Do you um, know him? Did somebody set that up for yeah, you? Yeah, so Russell's from Columbus, Georgia, and he's uh, he's a good friend of my assistant coach at Ohio State. Cool. So uh, we're going to set that up. We're actually going to play par three with him and uh, Larry Mize. Nice. So 
Uh, it'll be a really fun little group. Um, and we're working on a few others right now. It's, you know, it's kind of, uh, it's cool about here at Augusta. There's no really set tee times. You kind of just show up and you kind of can get paired up with people or just uh, find games, which is it's, it's just pretty unique. What uh what are our goals this week? Like what are what are we what are we looking at in terms of how to play Augusta National? What do we want to do? Like what's the check boxes as you go through the week? You know, I want to really focus on this week just committing to every golf shot. Okay. Um you know as an amateur, you know, I think it's really hard to put expectations on where you should finish. Um and I just want to focus on trying to do a really good job of just committing to each shot and trusting what I'm doing. Um, and if I can do that for every shot I hit and I miss the cut, then, you know, I would have learned I need to work on something. But I definitely think if I commit to each shot that I'll do a lot better than uh, uh, MC Hammer this week. <laughs> uh, who are you rooting for in March Madness? Oh, gosh. Um, well, I was well, I was rooting for JMU. That's what I was originally. That's what I was asking. Yeah, I was kind of you kind of have you kind of yeah, I mean, go one oh way or the other. Oh my gosh! Well, yeah, I mean Ohio State wasn't in it this year, so it's pretty easy to cho- choose James Madison. And uh, I mean that first game against Wisconsin was absolutely electric. I was <laughs> we were we were traveling down to Florida, and I was watching it on the plane, and I was like fist pumping, and like <laughs> people 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 next to me must have thought I was crazy. But it was uh, it was awesome. They they probably thought I had a lot of money on the game. That's probably what it was. You're like, no, no, no. I'm yeah. I actually rooting yeah. for this team. Yeah, I, actually, I, I went there. It was great. <laughs> uh, but now, uh, here, I don't know if not. I bet you most of the listeners have never been to Harrisonburg, Virginia. But it's like most, li- most likely not. Yeah, it, it's an awesome little college town. And it, James Madison is it's a great school. Um, super undergrad focus. I've really enjoyed my three years there and have a lot of really good memories. And it was, it was a ton of fun. And wouldn't trade it for the world. I heard you still regrip your own grips. Is that right? That's like a thing you like to do. Do you let other people touch your golf clubs these days? Uh, <laughs> I I, uh, I I like to do a lot of things on my own. Okay. Um, grips, ta- uh, grip tape, things like that. Um, just, uh, just, just I've always been doing. I've always done it on my own. When did you start gripping your clubs? Do you remember? Oh gosh, I mean, I was probably maybe eleven or twelve. Okay. Uh, so yeah, our our caddy master at my home club, St. Clair Country Club, Billy is his name. Billy. Shout out would, Billy. Uh, yeah, shout out to Billy. He would uh, always he always regrip clubs, and I'd ask him during the middle of the day, like, "Oh, could we regrip a set today?" And he'd be like, well, "I'm like pretty freaking busy." He's like, "Well, I'll help you out." You're like, yeah, I know you just need to cut the grips off. I'll scrape off all the tape and start taping them up and slip the grips on. But um, so he started doing that. When we got into Lies Lofts, when we kind of got right before college, and then swing weight stuff, and we've been down that deep, deep, deep black hole of golf equipment for quite a while. I'm I'm pretty good about not switching too many stuff in and out, but uh, whenever I'm getting fit for clubs or anything like that, it's uh, pretty fun, and I enjoy that. You have a you have an interesting combo set with your irons. Can mm-hmm. you kind of walk us through? Because I think you have three different. I you know sets of irons in your in your combination set. Yeah, yeah. So I have the blueprint T's um, in nine through five iron. Okay. Um, are, they, are they new in the bag? Have you had them in there for a while? Uh, I've had those in. I've had the blueprints in for a long time. Uh, but I got the T's in in January. Okay. Um, and they've been awesome. Uh, they're a lot softer than the previous year's model, and um, I feel like they actually are maybe like a hair more forgiving, and it took a notch of spin off for me as well. Um, which was kind of all things I needed. Um, and I go up till five iron in that just because I, I launched the ball pretty high, and with a five iron, I can really get in the air. So with the the S model, you know, it was just coming out of a window that was just a little bit too high for me. Um, so then I went to the four for that, though, just to get a little bit extra help in a four iron, a little bit, you know, when you're hitting it 230, you'd rather have a little bit of help. Totally. Uh, yes, absolutely. And then uh, for a driving iron, we have a I-230. It's a three iron that I think is power spec. Okay. And we have a Ventus Black, uh, ten, I think it's a 100 gram TX, something like that. Um, but that thing's like one of my favorite clubs in my bag. It's uh, it's great. It just gives you enough help, uh, you know, on those off-center hits. But, you know, sometimes with if you get a little bit of a beefier club, you can just kind of catch some that go like five or 10 yards more. So I just, it, it kind of allows me to have some really good control over that club and distance. And, you know, on a whole, like call it 15, if I have 230, you know, I into the middle of the green, I know I 
you know, I can't really hit it over because I'm not going to hit it like 255. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, it's so not going to jump on you. Yeah, exactly. Um, what do you do really well right now with your golf game? And what is something as you kind of look at your game to go to the next level that you want to improve on or you just want to tighten up a little bit? Yeah, I feel like I, I drive the golf ball really well. Um, I definitely think that at that part of my game can hold up with all these guys out here. Okay. I hit it, you know, plenty long and, you know, I hit it a ton of fairways. Pretty straight. You, yeah, you cut yeah. it. You turn it. Anything? Uh, I, I I cut it cut it a little bit okay. normally, but um, just kind of on a day to day thing. Yeah. You know, it's <laughs> you know, I, it's smoking I, like a true golfer. Yeah, I I try to I try to be. I, I always kind of look to be around neutral so yeah. that I'm able to kind of do a lot of things with the golf ball. Um, so I think I do that really well. Long irons and like mid irons are really good. I just you know I I definitely think I I could use some work on 130 and in. Um, you know that that with the wedge wedge stuff is that um, like a spin thing, a distance control thing? Like when you when you kind of look at yourself, is it you want it to be tighter in terms of being able to get kind of creative with those types of golf shots, or just locking in your numbers a little bit better? Uh, yeah, it's just more about consistency. Okay. Um, you know, my my good shots are really good. Um, my okay shots are you know okay, but the bad ones need to you know I need with wedges. Um, I hit a bad one every once in a while that is just not on the green. Um, and you know, really, I feel like 130 and in, you really need to lock up those greens and give yourself a putt of birdie. Um, and a lot of that just comes down to getting some better reps. And you know, I, I think we've we've made really large strides in the last year and a half on that part of my game. And you know, giving myself a lot of good birdie chances. And you know, I, I putt it really solid. Um, you know, chip it around the green really good. So I I feel like you know, that's the thing with how far I drive it and how well I drive it. I have 130 in the middle of the fairway a lot in college golf. So I uh, just need to get really good from there and, you know, things will work itself out. The pressure of a semifinal match at the U.S. Amateur, knowing that if you win that match, you get a likely invited to the Masters. What's the pressure like for you in that match, knowing what is to come? It's a great question. I, I feel like you have to kind of embrace it a little bit okay. and just acknowledge it. Um, acknowledge it like, yeah, like this match is really important, but like let's just go out and just play golf and hit golf shots and – see what happens uh you know embrace the crowd and just really enjoy it and because you know for me in that year i knew that that would probably be my last u.s amateur regardless right. um and so having just going in there just like uh playing like a kid and just really enjoying the moment it just was super helpful for me to just relax under that type of pressure what is the plan when are you when are you going to flip the script from a to p um we have to finish up u.s open first and then uh it's kind of a to be determined thing from okay. there. Uh, have, I might, you been, have you played Pinehurst before? Not played Pinehurst, uh, so really excited to be out there. Um, you know, I've heard a lot of really good things. I, I'm a big fan of a lot of the Donald Ross courses. Yeah. Um, like I know Seminole is pretty similar in terms of having kind of turtle back greens and you know having just a lot of difficult shots uh, coming into green. So uh, I think it'll probably suit my game and suit my eye. Um, but yeah, no, that's we'll we'll play U.S. Open and then. Uh, Kind of figure out from there, depending on what type of starts we get and what status we have. If I'd have told you in 2023, hey, by the way, next year you're going to play in two majors, what would you have said? Would you have expected that? Would you have been excited about it? Would you have been surprised by that? I think it would have been slightly surprised, especially if you would have told me around this time last year I was really struggling okay. with my game. Um, <laughs> uh, just mostly with the struggling with the putter. Okay. Um, I think, well, this week, last year was Calusa Pines event, and I think I shot 100. Uh, I mean, it was really bad. Uh, we so, won't look those scores up. No, uh, please don't. But uh, <laughs> but no, now it's being here, like, it's, I think it just, it's awesome because I've worked really hard for a lot of years and always had, you know, this goal in my mind. Um, and to actually be here is just really freaking sweet. Would you switch with the putting? What switch for you? Different uh, style putter? Did you did you switch the way you you do things, or just something clicked for you? Yeah, well, so yeah, it was at first it was, we had an issue with speed putting, and then we switched putters and got really good at speed putting, and but we couldn't hit that putter on line to okay. save our life. <laughs> so we we switched up alignment aids a little bit. Um, I, I went from kind of like a really light um answer style, but it wasn't a ping putter, and then switched into a ping and the the speed putting got really good, but that had a top line on it. And then I just couldn't hit it online to save my life. So we just got a plane, nothing on top. And uh, that was great. Used it at the US Amateur, putted awesome all summer, had a lot of great results with it. Um, 
just a re- really, really good putter. And we have a similar style putter in the bag now, uh, and I've been loving it. I always think about this at the Masters. If I was an amateur in the field or you know a new pro, I would be thinking so much about making an eagle and taking home some some crystal. Is that anywhere in the brain? Are you like, I, I mean, obviously you want to make an eagle at any golf tournament you play in, but you know, your first, let's say 20 footer on 13 or your first 15 footer on 15 is like, this is good for my scorecard, but also good for what, what eventually will be shipped in the mail. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'd, I'd hope to get the ace and just kind of have to not think about <laughs> well, it. Well, I think they give you a bowl if you make a hole in one. That'd be pretty sweet. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But the, but the, uh, I mean, I'll tell you, if I have like a bad number on 13, it's not going to be like, oh, I need to make you look at Crystal. I'm going to go whack it up there. <laughs> you see, you, you're not, that's not going to creep yeah, into the brain. Yeah, it's not going to creep into the brain. But uh, I, I'll just, you know, I, if I, I think it'll come to my mind after I make an equal putt and be go. like, let's go. You got some Crystal. But, uh, you know, you just got to stay patient for things like that and it'll happen. Yeah, well, good luck this week. Uh, appreciate you taking some time. I want to watch you do some regripping as well. So we're going to do Perfect. that too. Awesome. Neil Shipley, everybody.